Hello and welcome to this occasional series of interviews uh, that I'm doing with different members of the community at York St John. My name is Jane Speck and I'm the chaplain here and these interviews are reflecting on the death of George Floyd whose anniversary is coming around at this time of year. I'm joined today by Dr Olalekan Adekola who is a lecturer in geography. Lakin, welcome. Thank you very much, Jane. Nice to Wonderful. join you today. Thank you. It's lovely to have you with us today. And uh, we really appreciate you giving the time. Yeah. So we've just got 10 minutes. Uh, so it's very short. So I'm just asking people really for their personal reflections on what George Floyd's death meant to you and how that has been for you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to join you again. Um, uh, with Judge Floyd, I think, like you said, it's been a difficult period for majority of communities. Um, and for me, when it happened, it was just more or less like another example of police brutality against African-American community. And I saw it as just something following on from the historical sort of police brutality that we've seen with the Rodney King case and uh, that happened around 1991, if I'm correct. However, this was a bit different from that because with other incidences, it's either been maybe a police shooting that's just taking place within split seconds or with Rodney King, whereby it was much more time consuming and then he didn't die. But with the... Uh, Judge Floyd's one. It's like seeing uh, life being snuffed out of someone and him being murdered and gradually life being snuffed out of him. I think that sort of hit me really hard. And with the uh, current media and um, mobile phone technology that everything was captured on, uh, on mobile phone and we can see that. So the initial feeling really for me was quite uh, serious pain, a lot of distress, especially, um, I'm not in the US, but for the African American community in the US, I felt sort of like the pain that they will be feeling at that point. And again, I couldn't just sort of understand that level of man's uh, inhumanity to man. So to say, our police officer who would expect always taking the oath of office to protect the community will end up being the one that sort of, like I said, not instantly, I'm not saying if it's instant, it's better, but sort of like gradually watch someone who is under your care, sniff life, sort of snuff life out of them, sort of gradually until they breath their last. I thought that was quite, quite and still is uh, distressing. Um, um, after it happened, I had thought that would create a sort of space whereby there'll be a radical rethink about how this sort of police relation with the black communities, not just in the US, but also in other countries, also in the UK, and how the uh, police community resorts to force and the sort of often uh, stereotypic views of the black communities as maybe a community that needs to be policed in a different way. I thought maybe that would bring a sort of rethink. And while preparing for this interview, I was just reflecting on what is happening in the last few days again, mm -hmm. thinking about what's happened with, is it the second lieutenant? I can't remember the name now. Is it Nazario? And also the shooting about a few days ago of um, Mr. Wright. And you, you sort of think, are we really making any progress or are we still sort of stagnant? And every time it happens, it sort of reopens the wounds again. And for me, I think that's the feeling up until now. It's that I haven't felt that distress. It's like the wound is being open. And I think for most Black members of the Black or African-American community, um, but we, I hope I can speak for them, is that sort of exhaustion and the fatigue of it being like a cycle of things happening and re-happening again. Um, sadly, the, I think the killing of George Floyd um, and the recent examples of uh, police uh, brutality that we've experienced, it again, goes beyond the uh, American 
uh, society, but like I said, we can look at it also from other communities. But the real issue must really be not to focus on the anger and the distress for me. I think it's how we can not look at the, yes, we can be angry, we can be frustrated, but it's how we can channel that frustration, that anger into tangible and positive change. Um, I think that for me is always the key thing that yes, it's happened, we need to take action, but how can we not then partake in maybe destructions in society, but channel that to in a positive way, that sort of raw emotion, the raw anger alone wouldn't create the change that we desire, that I believe someone like George Floyd himself would have desired and would have expected to see um, at the end of what has happened to him. So it's getting us to um, not use that anger or be hateful, but to actually um, have hope and being able to take action. Yes, we've seen the action that's been taken, but also being expectant um, of change and also to demand that change actually in a positive way. So those are some of my uh, sort of uh, reflections and we need to make that demand. Um, and as an academic, I've also reflected on my own role and the role of my employers that I work for, York St. John University. I know we can do more, but I'm proud of what we're already doing as a university, York St. John University, especially when it comes to engaging, uh, not only with the black communities, but also with minority groups, with vulnerable groups, especially with the establishment of the Institute for Social Justice. It's actually been focused on uh, creating positive change and promoting actual change in society. So Lucan, tell me about uh, your perspective on this as an academic and whether that has an effect, you think, on the way that you uh, have approached this and the way you feel about it. Yes, it has to some extent as an academic. I think um, one of the first things I've thought about and reflected on is the role, my role and the role also of my university. And I believe what happened to George Floyd has placed some demand as well uh, on the universities and higher education institutions and requires universities to sort of find a different way to interact with the black communities. And I think I'm proud the way York St. John as a university has approached that. I can say we are at the forefront of trying to renew that type of engagement. And recently with the uh, establishment of the Institutes of Social Justice, which is not only looking at theorizing social justice or looking at issues around that Judge Floyd's brought up from a theoretical point, I think uh, Institutes of Social Justice is looked at it from making actual impact on the ground, pursuing and promoting a fairer society. And I think for me as an academic and for the universities and higher education institution, I think on reflection, that is the sort of direction we should be go going. Uh, because sometimes the theorization, I think it's important, but sometimes it um, sort of draws out a bit from, from ends up making us miss the critical issue. I'll give an example, the recent debate around should we use BAME, should we use BAME or should we not? As good as it is, and I agree language matters, but often at times when we dwell too much on some of those issues, it can make us lose the critical issue, the fair society that we really, really want to achieve or the sort of thing that George Floyd has taught us and that we'll want to uh, sort of achieve. So that's my thinking around um, my role as an academic. Yes, it's good to theorize, but actually to make that real impact on the ground like we are doing with Institute for Social Justice. And also as a person of faith, I was just saying, I've also reflected on it, not just as an academic, but also as a person of faith to say, 
And one of the things that there are different dimensions, but one that stuck with me is that story in Luke chapter 10 around the Good Samaritan and how different other people came around and none sort of helped the man that was in need. But this one man came around and he was able to help. And I felt with the uh, mother of George Floyd, there were a lot of people there. There were those that also stood back and stood behind and really did nothing. And I was not thinking also of the people of the public, but the three other police officers that could have been the good Samaritan, that could have done something, that could have said something, that could have been of help. Yes, we can't blame Derek Chauvin. I think what he did is quite bad, sad. However, there were three other police officers there that could have done something, that could have been the good Samaritan, that could have changed the situation. And I reflected on that in from that perspective of the need that we also need to be good Samaritan to other members of the society, but also the way we use our power, the way we use our, uh, our position. So the police officers probably have used their position in a particular way. Get me reflecting about that, the way we uh, use our position and our power uh, in uh, society. We need to use our power and our position for good to promote life, not to end life. Um, and I think there's still a lot of healing that needs to be done, not just in America and with what is happening at the moment, but I think globally, there is a lot that can, uh, a lot of healing. Looking at all this and what happened to Judge, uh, Judge Floyd and this sort of everything globally in the UK, in the US, I think there are also positives out of it, the first is the sort of international reaction that the uh, Judge Floyd's death brought up, the sort of sense of community that we can see, the oneness uh, globally, that we could see people of different faiths, different communities coming together with one voice for one purpose. I think that for me uh, was very strong, uh, was a very strong point of reflection to say we can actually come together. And George Floyd actually did that in death. I think for me that was very strong. And it brought up this sort of, um, the debate about race issue, inequalities in society. Um, it brought it also to the fore. I think that was also uh, a positive for me from what happened to uh, Judge Floyd within uh, those uh, uh, after his death. My hope is that um, what happened to him provides a foundation for us to create meaningful change, to create change in society, to create change not only in policing, but also change generally and the way that we uh, approach different communities uh, in society. And it's important that we remember George Floyd. He has inspired us. For me, he has inspired me, uh, even in his death, he's inspired me to speak up. He's inspired me to breathe. He's inspired me to be able to stand up to breathe, to actually take my breath. I value that more. And also, he, he challenged the knee on his neck. He didn't just keep quiet. It inspired me also to say, if there is a knee, if the figurative knee now that we've come to uh, uh, know much about, to speak up about that, to, to say things if we have any knees and challenge those sort of situations. And I'll say lastly, it's also challenged me to uh, achieve the best that I can because I believe um, even though a short life, uh, contextually, but I think it did the best that it could do at that point. And um, maybe not on a emotional note, and I think one of the things that touched me also with that is the call for his mom. I think that was quite touching, mm -hmm. uh, that even in that, he still remembered uh, his mom at the last moment. So a lot to reflect on, uh, but I hope I've been able to touch on some of my own, uh, briefly on some of my reflections uh, on the death of Judge Floyd as we celebrate the first year uh, anniversary of his killing. Yeah, Lakin, thank you so much. It's, it's such a traumatic thing to be talking about. There's so much pain in it. And you've expressed that, but you've also brought hope 
to the fore and you've talked about action and I mean I, I couldn't agree more really that you know mm. sometimes we feel like words are all we have but actually there are actions that mm -hmm. we can all take yeah. um, and responsibilities that we can all take and yeah. um yeah, I love the story of the Good Samaritan, that it was the completely unexpected person yeah. who stepped forward. And yeah, what a challenge to be yeah. that completely unexpected person awesome. yeah. who steps up. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for oh. your time. I really appreciate it. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person. Yeah, at some hopefully. Point when we're back on Very campus. Soon.